the reasons America is suffering right now is because some of the smartest, most talented people in the country are not having children. They're politically active, but they're not having children. And so they, they get the message. I mean, that's one of the reasons we're suffering. It's the hedonism. It's the drug, sex, and rock and roll. But I don't want to go down that road right now. And I didn't mean to get too preachy. I didn't want to go into the sexual area. I just wanted to stick to the high road of what family means. That's It's that simple. And I guess it goes back to my digression a little earlier of how has chance affected your life? And can chance affect America's uh, you know, future history? Can chance intervene right now? Look at what happened to us when so many good people thought that Barack Obama was an honest, caring, America-loving man. Look how you were hoodwinked. Many of you voted for him because you said anyone but Bush. You wanted nothing to do with war. That's a good sentiment. Nobody wants war. Only a fool wants war. But the fact is, he lied to you. He lied to you. He's a Machiavellian, self-interested individual, period. Surrounded by the worst people America's ever had inflicted upon it. So look what chance did to this country. You took a chance on Barack Obama. You know you were lied to. What, now you want to take a chance on Hillary Clinton when you already know who she is? Many of you don't like Hillary Clinton. I've met liberals who say, you know, I really don't like her. I actually hate her. But I'll never vote for a Republican. Well, that really makes sense. That really makes sense. That makes as much sense as my relatives whose, whose grandfather landed in New York City like my grandfather did and never changed their politics from when the time they were socialists off the boat from Russia. They can't evolve. They can't grow. What's the matter? Someone's going to say, oh, you voted for a Republican? What's going to happen? You're going to be ostracized from the Mahjong game? You'll be thrown out of B'nai B'rith? I mean, what's going to happen if you vote a Republican? It's called a secret ballot. I don't understand how people get stuck in the past like this. I don't understand it. They take a look around and they see the devastation that has been wrought by this administration. All right, I made my point. I've been on my high horse. I'm on my soapbox. Got it out of my system. Before we go to the next caller, let's have some rock and roll. We played something like Eddie My Love. You're taking the Q44A and the richest kid in the school has a new Chevy convertible. How's that for a beginning? Donald Trump is a cross Union turnpike being driven in a limousine. You're riding a bus in the slush. <laughs> How's that? How's that for a little beginning? You go to a Dante's Pizza on Union Turnpike and it smells like vomit. I'll be right back. What language do you need to speak to understand this song? How about American? About speaking American and knowing the history of Buddy Holly. Put that on the on the uh, citizenship exam. Who was Buddy Holly? What were his biggest hits? And in what years was he prominent? Look at the ratings came in for last month. They're great. My ratings for the month of October came in. I'm not allowed to read them to you, but I'm doing great on WABC. I'm doing great on KSFO. I'm doing great on WLS in Chicago, WBAP. These are the, you know, the early ratings. And uh, I want to thank you for, uh, for patronizing the show. What else can I say? Radio is king. That's it. That's the whole thing. Without radio, there'd be nothing. I'd have, I mean, what would I have? If I left radio, what would it be? I have to do like a, one of the shows that people do in their house with two Dixie cups and a string and a, and a hot light, and they hook it up into their computer and they think eighteen people are watching it, and they're they're, fam they're famous. They got a studio. There's guys who build studios for themselves for half a million dollars and have twelve people watching them. So I'm uh, thrilled to death here. Never thought that. Uh... Do you ever dream for something in your life and you don't think you're going to have it like you remember when you were a kid you wanted to be a ball player let's say or an astronaut whatever that was at the time no do you know any kid who wants to be an astronaut right now most kids would rather be a porn star than an astronaut to show you how the base the society has become you ask an average kid what would you like to be he says my like when my kids are young astronaut ball player now it's probably porn star or web operator which is one of the same thing talk about cultural you know decline well as we slide into the end of hour number two here i would be remiss if i didn't tell you that i'd love you to go to barnes and noble or <laughs> books a million or amazon right now and buy a copy of government zero and send the message to washington that you exist you agree with the message and that you vote it'd be nice it'd be nice if every listener to this show bought a copy but i don't expect that to happen so i've been giving a lot out and we'll do our best and hope for the best we'll know by i'll let you know by next wednesday what happens the way the book business works, books come out on a Tuesday for whatever the weird reason is. They publish them on Tuesdays. And then they count the sales from that Tuesday through the following 
Monday, I think, or something like that. And then they reported on Wednesday of the following week uh, who the winners are and who the losers are. And it's everything in the first week. It's like a movie. You ever see the actors go on tours when their movies come out? They don't want to do it. They reluctantly do it. But even the big shot actors have to go do their tours, don't they? Right? Johnny Depp, whatever. Whoever the big stars are. They got to do the tours. De Niro's got to do the tours and the ha-has and the hellos and the, 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 these shows and that shows. They got to promote their movie because it's all in the first weekend. They blow that first weekend. The movie's already uh, made for television. Well, hopefully books are a little different than movies, and hopefully people who consume books are a little more, uh, let's say, looking for a little more depth than a movie, although I myself love film. And I hope you'll be one of those people to look into what I mean by government zero. No borders, no language, no culture. So we might just have a chance of having a border, some language, and some culture. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. There must be someone who plays the saxophone and knows how they do that. Young man from L.A. who listens to me. Uh, can you do the horn like that? Call the show and play on the air. Here we are, hour three. Hour three. It's Thursday of Book L Week. That's something interesting to tell you. No, no, in radio, you know, you learn that every second counts. It's a, it's a medium about timing, isn't it? Do you ever notice that the really good ones in radio have a sense of timing? Everything has to be to the second. You can almost feel it like a musical thing. Okay, so that's that's what I'm saying. But like during breaks, I have guys counting me down from across the studio. Like, how much time? You hear me yelling, three minutes. Then I'm like gagging on a burrito, as I just did. The, the beans are falling off my mouth. I'm wiping. I'm gagging. I'm drinking a soda. How much time? 30 seconds. It's like, whatever you do, you can't do anything without asking how much time do you have. It's become my mantra, how much time? I guarantee you when they're load, lowering me in the ground, the last thing they'll hear my, uh, uh, muttering on uh, me muttering is how much time? And the answer will be, your time is up. <laughs> uh, yeah, these are hard weeks. I call it hell week, the week your book comes out. Ask anyone in radio because it's tough. I mean, you've got to figure a way to talk about the book without alienating the audience because you can't talk about the book to the exclusion of everything else. And it's, uh, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough tightrope to walk on to keep you listening, keep you interested, and tell you how important your book is. It's that simple. And I hope I have done a good job for you so far this week. I don't think I've overdone it. You know, when I say to you, here are some liberal statements, for example, and how to answer them with comments from government zero, I think that's a good way to do it. Or last night's debate, more to the point. You saw what went on last night. How long have I told you about zero media? How long have I defined it as the government media complex? It was never more clearly on display than last night, right? And uh, many uh, of, of the people up there were so dignified, it was fabulous. I don't know why they didn't just get up on Moss and walk off stage and leave those, those vaudevillians to, 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 to argue with each other. The girl could have done a striptease. Uh, the hardhead could have done, a, I don't know, something about putting on makeup in front of a mirror, how much he loves himself. And the other guy could have done something about how hair looks better with shoe polish on your head. Let's listen to clip number 12 on the Savage Nation. Well, I think uh, they obviously uh, had an agenda. Uh, and when I compare them to the kind of questions that were asked of the Democrats in their debate, uh, the difference is night and day. But the thing that was really encouraging to me is that the audience was able to pick up on the bias and uh, they were able to act accordingly. And I hope some of the media is starting to recognize this because, as you know, you know, I have been quite critical of the media. Uh, they have their own agenda. They try to formulate the opinions of the people. And uh, I think the people are getting a little sick and tired of it. I know I am. Yeah, well, there is an answer, Mr. Carson. And the answer is quite simple. Boycott any future debates. That's my opinion. 
You want to debate? Let let the individuals who are running for office set their own terms, book their own auditorium, book their own audience, and I don't know, I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. I'll be one of the moderators. How's that? I'll even send them the questions in advance. And it won't be, is this a clown show? So what questions would I ask now that I come down to it? Here, I'll give you a few examples. And I make them up. I don't have this written out in front of me, so pardon me if they're not perfect. I'm a little tired right now. I've been doing too many interviews day and night. And uh, the first question I would ask the entire group of candidates, something that they wouldn't ask Hillary Clinton, would be, what will you do to restore the military that has been decimated under Barack Obama? What steps would you take? It's a simple question. It says everything, isn't it? Got a little bias built in. But it's not a personal undercutting. Question number two to all the candidates up there. What strategy would you use against ISIS to make up for the nun war that Obama has uh, not fought against them? Question number three. On the issue of religion, what would you do to restore Christianity in the United States of America and protect it around the world since it's under assault by the government, in universities, and in the Middle East? Next question. What would you do to seal the borders? Not if you would seal the borders. What would be the first step you would take to seal the borders with Mexico? Next question. Let's make it about culture. What would you do to stop Hollywood's assault upon the family? Short of censorship. How would you encourage Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Geffen to stop attacking the family, Christianity, God, and country? Next question would be something along to do with business. What would you do to strengthen the U.S. dollar so that people have faith in our currency again? Very simple question. Uh, to the candidates on the stage, what would you do to reestablish free speech in the United States of America? Speech which is under assault in the universities and in the press. Keep your mouth shut and obey. Next question would be, since Obama has tried to destroy the American police in this country, what would you do to reinvigorate people to going into police departments how would you stop obama's end game of a national police force those are some of the questions i would ask uh, and they all come from my 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 book government zero it's that simple how's that good sam ksfo welcome to the program what's your topic oh my la saxophone player young man young man young man so when i hear that horn what was the song that we were playing, Robert? Yeah. Speedo, and then the horn. What is that horn? Was it an alto or sax? I mean, what is it, an alto sax? What is it, or a tenor sax? I think it was. A, I, I sound like a tenor. I, I only caught the tail end of it. Could you actually play something like that? Eh, 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 where he goes uh, uh, the whole thing? Yeah, you know what? Uh, no one can do that anymore. I can't even do that. Oh come on now! So I, you mean no one can do that? Here we go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean. Okay, hold on. Now let's go back to um, the song. What was it? Speedo? Let's play Speedo and let's listen to this piece of saxophone music I'm referring to because I don't know how anyone could do this anymore. 15 year old kid. I wish I could have played the saxophone, but I didn't. So, Sam, you're a great saxophone player. Sam Gendel is one of my listeners. He once sent me a book called, what was it about, the poem book you did? What was that, Sam? Tell the audience. Uh, it's the found poetry of Dr. Michael Savage. It, it, he took my shows over the years without my knowing it, and he extracted certain words from my monologues and, and basically set them to music. And he wanted to publish the book, and he sent it to me, and I said, I'd rather you didn't. But the uh, I think you called them radio poems. I don't know what you did. They were really good. You took the essence of my words and reduced them to poetry rather than using full sentences. You used only partial parts of the sentences, right, Sam? Yeah, just the distillation. Distillation, distillation. You made vodka from the wine. So, Sam, how's the world of being a young musician today? Can you make a living at it? Uh, not the way I want to make a living at it. I yeah, mean, well, I wish I could help you. Okay, before you go, Sam Gendel, can anyone buy your CD? What do they do to find your CD? Because you're a great saxophone player. They go, go, go to my website, which is just samgendel.com, S-A-M-G-E-N-D-E-L.com, and that'll link you to everything. 
Okay, my friend. I hope that your sales go through the roof. And